Hi everyone, my name is Claudio Mandrioli and I'm here to present at FEC 2020 the work I've done with Martina Maggio on the testing of self-adaptive software with probabilistic guarantees on performance metrics. First of all, why should we care about testing self-adaptive software? In general, autonomous systems are becoming more pervasive in our daily lives and they're getting involved in more safety critical applications. For this reason, it is very important to verify that they satisfy and guarantee the performance requirements expected from them. But autonomous systems also live in highly uncertain environments. For this, for this reason, it is very important to verify that they are able to perform in all the possible realizations of this uncertainty. But this is not exactly an easy problem. And I will show why this is the case through an example. Let's take a web application that provides some service to, to the customers and the, and the users. In this web application, we will measure some performance that we want to satisfy the requirements expected from it. On the other side, there will be uncertainties affecting the performance of such system. For example, the request load can vary over time, the types of requests can be different and unexpected, and the computational resources can change. For this reason, we introduce adaptation or autonomy. In, in adaptation, we measure the performance of the system and we try to tweak some some of its parameters in such a way that the performance always satisfies the requirements respectively of the changing in the, in the uncertainty. Now, if we want to verify that our adaptation guarantees the performance level expected, we will need to verify that for many different combinations of those of the uncertainty affecting the system. And this can, can be very tricky, both because this kind of uncertainty we we don't want to explicitly define it com uh, completely, otherwise we wouldn't need adaptation and we could just measure it and react it. And also it can lead to exponential combination of, this real of its realizations, leading to infinite test cases, which of course we cannot perform. For this reason, we advocate for the use of a probabilistic approach instead of a deterministic one in the testing of such a system. So let's see what does it mean to have a probabilistic approach in the testing of self-adaptive software. Having a probabilistic approach in such context means that we will randomly generate test case scenarios for the uncertainty of the system. This will allow efficient exploration of the possible realizations of the uncertainty. The problem is that once we've done this, we will obtain different possible realizations of the performance of our adaptation strategy. And the question is, how can we analyze such data in a way to obtain bounds, general bounds on the performance of the system? And once we have obtained this bound, what is our confidence in those bound in such a way that we know whether we have tested enough or not, and we need to carry on more tests or not. So the question that we try to address in the paper is exactly this one on this block called the analysis block. How do we carry on this analysis? In the paper, we have investigated both tools from traditional statistics, and we propose, because of the limitations of such traditional tools, we propose a novel tool coming from the field of robust control called scenario theory. Let's look at the three of them. The traditional tools that we have investigated in the paper are Monte Carlo and extreme value theory. Monte Carlo talks about the average performance of a system. The average performance is the one performance that alone best describes all the possible performances that we can expect from such a system. Extreme value theory instead tries to provide a full policy description of a worst case performance of the system. Differently, scenario theory provides a probabilistic bound on, on the performance that we can expect from the system. Let's now look in detail at each of them, how they look like. Monte Carlo methods are based on the central limit theorem. The central limit theorem says that if we take the sample mean of a random variable, we obtain a quantity that has the same expected value as the original variable and reduce and a variance that is re gets reduced as long as we increase the number of samples. In this way, we can use Monte Carlo methods to get a feeling of what is the average of the, of 
and the average performance of our adaptation strategy. The problem is that this convergence is not quantifiable, so we cannot get a, a value of the confidence that we can have in the obtained result. And also, the average is not always the best way to describe the performance of a system. In this case, for example, this value over here is not telling much, much, as much about what we can expect from the system, and it will not allow us to formally bound the performance that we can expect from the system. The other traditional tool that we investigate in the paper is extreme value theory. Extreme value theory is based on a similar result as Monte Carlo. It's based on the asymptotic convergence of the maximum of a number of samples of random variable to an asymptotic distribution, namely the generalized extreme value distribution. In this way, when we observe a number of samples of, a, of, a, of the variable we are interested in, we will be able to obtain a probabilistic description of a worst case. But the application of this theory presents similar limitations to the one of Monte Carlo. That is, this convergence is not absolutely quantifiable, and therefore we cannot obtain a quantification of the confidence that we can have in the obtained result. Moreover, the number of samples needed to estimate the parameters of this distribution can be very high, and those samples are quite rare since they're intri they intrinsically belong to extreme events. For these reasons, in the paper, we propose the use of the novel scenario theory that can overcome said limitations. So let's see how to apply scenario theory to our testing problem. To do so, we need to formulate the testing problem as an optimization problem. More specifically, we will formulate it as the robust solution of an uncertain optimization problem. So let's start simple. What is an optimization problem? An optimization problem is composed by a cost function that we want, that is a quantity that we want to maximize or optimize, and some constraints that are limits in the decisions we can take in order to optimize such quantity. In a similar way, in our testing problem, we want to find what is the best performance that we can guarantee given the specific instance, given the specific realization of, this, of our system. Now, the problem here is that the constraints, that is, the possible realizations of our system are uncertain. So what we want to find is the best performance that is irrespective of the uncertainty of our system. And this is exactly the robust solution to an uncertain optimization problem in which we don't know exactly what are the constraints, but we want to account for all of them so that we can be robust to what they actually are. In this way, we have obtained the following parallelism. On one side, we have a function that we want to optimize irrespectively of some unknown constraints. On the other side, we have a performance that we want to guarantee irrespectively of the possible realizations of the system. Now, if we want to robustly optimize the, our function, we will need to account for all the possible constraints that we can have. In the same way, if we want to robustly guarantee our performance, we will need to perform infinite test cases in, in, in order to account for all the possible infinite realizations of the uncertainty. How do we solve the, this, this problem of dealing with the infinite? Here is exactly where scenario theory comes in. Scenario theory allows us to draw conclusions about the general case, so the case with infinite constraints or test cases, even though we instead just look at a finite number of constraints or test cases. So let's see how scenario theory does that. The key is to define two quantities. The first one is the probabilistic bound. So if we have observed a number of tests, if we have performed a number of tests, and we have observed this worst case from our test, epsilon will be the probability that we accept of observing in the future a performance worse than the worst case observed in the test cases. The other quantity that we define is beta, the testing confidence. That is, the probability that obtaining probability epsilon is wrong. What scenario theory provides us is the relation between those two quantities. So if we want a tight bound, epsilon here would be small, and we will need a large n, that is a large number of test cases, to obtain a high confidence in our result. 
vice versa, if we accept a more loose bound, a high, uh, we will obtain more quickly, so with a lower number of test cases, a high confidence in our result. Let me remark in this picture where we have the bars that represent test cases and the dash line, the ideal distribution of our performance, that the dash line is not known. So when in the real world case application, we will not have the dash line, we will just have the bars. And scenario theory will allow us exactly to estimate this area over here that is the probability of observing something worse than the worst case observed in our test cases. Moreover, we will have this testing confidence beta that allows us to state whether we can be confident enough in the obtained result or not. And so whether we need to carry more tests or not. Let's see now how the practical implementation of our testing approach looks like. In the paper, we have two case studies, the teleassistance system and the self-adaptive video encoder. Both of them are very well known in the field of self-adaptive software. In, we will use the first one to show how scenario theory exposes a trade-off between the number of tests and the confidence that we can have in our testing campaign. Instead, we will use the case study of the self-adaptive video encoder to show how scenario theory can be used to compare different adaptation strategies. The first case study is the Telesystem Service System. It is a service that provides the users with remote healthcare. The users have some wearable device that on a daily basis collects data from the patient and sends them to a remote service. In this remote service, the data are analyzed and used to decide whether the patient has no needs or needs some different dosage in some drugs or needs an ambulance. In the first case, it will do nothing. And in the other case, it will call some service that provides the given, service, the given, the, the given need for the patient. The uncertainty in this system comes in in the fact that the analysis service and the drug service and the ambulance service can be provided by different service providers. Those service providers have different quality levels and different reliability. Another form of uncertainty that is in the system is in the fact that we, don't, we cannot know a priori what are the needs of our patients. So it can be that many patients have no needs or many patients need an ambulance or whatever combination. Our adaptation strategy will therefore have to choose the medical services, the drug services and the ambulance services in such a way that the, perform the overall performance of the system is maximized. In the paper, we have modeled the system and perform 500 tests. We will then use scenario, we then use scenario theory to evaluate what is the performance from the system that we can always guarantee. In this plot, we can see the evaluated worst case, how it grows along the 500 tests that were performed. As we can see in the beginning, the worst case increased very quickly. And while there later, it becomes more stable. Scenario theory, as we said, starts with defining this epsilon variable. That is the, the probability that we accept of our worst case not holding in the future. For instance, if we accept only 1% probability that our worst case will not be satisfied in the general case, we will obtain the confidence beta that grows with this fashion with respect to the increasing number of test cases. So as we can see, we have a very strict bound and therefore a confidence that grows very slowly. If instead we accept a more loose bound, like 95% of the cases, we will obtain a confidence that grows pretty quickly. So epsilon will be the probability of observing a performance worse than the ones observed in the, in the test cases. And after the 500 tests, we will have beta confidence that this probability is actually correct. The other case study that we have in the paper is the self-adaptive video encoder. In a self-adaptive video encoder, what we want to do is to compress a stream of frames in order to store them 
or send them over a network in an efficient way. The problem here is that the compression of frames is highly dependent on the specific content of the frame. For this reason, what the adaptive video encoder wants to do is to optimize the encoding parameters in order to obtain optimal compression. The way it works is therefore that we take, it takes some already encoded um, frames, like the purple ones over here. It measures some the performance in terms of similarity between the compressed frame and the original frame and the size of the compressed frame and uses this information to tweak the encoding parameters for the next frame. In the paper, we have analyzed four different adaptation strategies for the self-adaptive video encoder. We have a random adaptation strategy in which the encoding parameters are chosen randomly for every frame. We have an integral and an MPC adaptation strategy that come from a control theory background. And we have an epsilon greedy uh, adaptation strategy that is, the, that is based on the anonymous machine learning algorithm. So what we want to show with this case study is that the worst case performance metric is the one that actually car carries the information that allows us to compare the different, things, the different adaptation strategies. In fact, if we look at the average performance over a set of videos, that is these gray dashed lines, we could obtain, we could conclude that basically our random choice of the encoding parameters is maybe not the best one for what concerns the similarity index, but is still good and is almost one of the best ones for what concerns the frame size. But if instead we look at the worst case, we can see clearly that the machine learning approach the, the worst case is shown by the red dashed lines. The worst case exposes that the epsilon greedy approach is the best one for our problem. Moreover, through scenario theory, we are able to rigorously quantify the probability of observing a performance worse than those in future videos. I want to conclude this presentation discussing the limitations of the, of the proposed approach. In the paper, we identified three limitations. The first one is intrinsic in the testing of self-adaptive system, and I've touched upon before. So on the one side, we don't really want to define the uncertainty that will affect the system, because we want to leave it open for the adaptation to adapt to it. If we rigorously define it, then we don't need an adaptation anymore because we know what we will expect and therefore we, we should know how to react to it. On the other side, if we want to test such a system, we want to define test cases. So we want to define what is the possible uncertainty that will affect the system. The second limitation is the generation of random test scenarios. It's very difficult to generate random sem sample the uncertainty that will affect a system and obtain something that is actually representative of the real system in an unbiased way. As an example, take the self-adaptive video encoder. The videos that we tested it against are all sport videos. This means that our results are connected with the encoding of sport videos. They will not hold for general videos. This means that there was a bias in the implementation of the approach that has to be taken into account when actually implemented in real life. The final limitations is the number of test cases. When you want to achieve high confidence, you will need a, a large number of test cases. And this can be limiting if the resources, the testing resources are constrained. On the other side, it's natural that if you want to achieve high confidence in some, in, on whatever result, you will need an amount of resources. With this, I conclude my presentation. I thank you a lot for listening. I hope to see you at FSE and that you join the discussion. Take care and bye-bye.